What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with another Golden Age comic book conservation video for Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years' experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we are continuing our video series in which we conserve this Golden Age comic book and prepare it for submission to CGC. In today's video, I'm going to disassemble and wet clean the cover of this comic book. With 80-year-old Golden Age comics, we really never know how it's going to go until we get into it. So stick around because we're about to get some old paper very wet. Our conservation candidate is a copy of Flash Comics number 20 from August 1941, which means it's an early pre-war issue from the first period of the Golden Age of comic books. It includes stories for three members of the Justice Society of America, Flash, Hawkman, and Johnny Thunder, and has a total of 68 pages. In episode one of this series, we discussed how Flash Comics was the most successful anthology series published by All-American Comics, Inc., one of the comic book companies that eventually became the company we know today as DC Comics. Flash Comics was published from January of 1940 through February of 1949, and the first issue famously has the first appearances of three members of the Justice Society of America, The Flash, Hawkman, and Johnny Thunder. Flash Comics number 20 is not a key issue, but being a pre-war Golden Age DC comic book means it will always be in demand as a collectible. And there are only 21 universal copies in the CGC census to meet that market demand, so this copy is definitely worth preserving. We did a walkthrough of the comic book to determine the condition and what flaws it had before developing a conservation plan to address any flaws we could in an effort to maximize the preservation and equity of this comic book. Overall, we decided we had a very solid collectible with great paper quality and only minor soiling. It did suffer from an apparent manufacturing defect that resulted in a rough cut on the top edge and subsequent tears in the first five wraps, as well as a small triangle missing from wrap number six. The cover has a spine split at the bottom of approximately two inches, but by far the greatest flaw we found was that there was an approximately one inch tear on the back cover that had been repaired by gluing the paper back together. This amateur restoration job will rightly get our comic book regarded as restored by CGC with a purple label. And we estimated the grade to be approximately 3.5 to 4.0 restored. Then we presented our game plan to remove the restoration and conserve this comic book to maximize the enjoyment, preservation, and equity. In episode two, I performed a dry cleaning of this comic book and demonstrated how to use document cleaning powder or a document cleaning pad to remove general light soiling on the surface of the comic book. And I shared my opinion that for removing dinginess from an old Golden Age comic, there really isn't any tool better suited to the job than document cleaning powder. I've created a playlist for this video series Check out the link if you missed either episode 1 or 2 and want to watch them before we get started today. Alright, let's get this disassembled so we can wet clean it. Of course, I've got clean and dry hands. This book just automatically, magically flipped open to the centerfold for me, which is nice. I use three different tools generally for staple removal. Remember how nice these staples are? They're so shiny and new looking. I use two tools from Rick Morgan over at Immaculate Comics. I use the Capable Staple Tool and the Flawless Staple Tool. The Capable Staple Tool is the clear piece of plastic. It has a groove in the bottom that allows you to stabilize the paper and the bent over staple arm so that you are only bending up one staple arm and nothing else is moving. And then I stabilize it with this piece of Delrin that's just a piece of plastic with a small hole drilled in it. And I use the flawless staple tool to turn the other arm up. 
I use the larger piece of Delrin because I like the large purchase it gives me to flatten a large surface area of the comic book. I just feel like it gives me more stability than the capable staple tool. But I never bothered to cut a groove in it, so I use the capable staple tool here to get started. This staple is not closed quite as tightly as the lower one, but the process is the same. You might notice that I use the capable staple tool to sort of twist the staple to point upward a little bit. Little details like that do make the work go easier. But this is pretty straightforward when you have such beautiful staples. They hardly look 80 years old, but I'm pretty confident they are original to the book. With this white paper, you can tell that other than the rips and tears the book has suffered, it's really been in a nice, cool, dry environment because the paper itself has hardly deteriorated at all. This staple, I like to sort of push and pull a little bit, and it doesn't really want to come out. I think the arms are still bent inward a little bit, so that was creating a little resistance. So I'm just going to open them up and try again. And it's as easy as that. One down. There it is. You can see a little bit of discoloration on the exposed part of the staple, just a little patina. That's nice, shows a little provenance. I have a piece of painter's tape here, labeled top and bottom. And not only am I going to preserve which one's on top, which one's on bottom, I'll also preserve the orientation of each staple. So the top arm should go to the top location when I put them back as well. For the top staple, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to gently push and pull. And similarly, staple comes out with little trouble. And I like to just pause for a moment there, just in case I ever screw up the orientation of the staples. I've got a little video record of it. Say if I were to drop this or drop the staple when I'm trying to reinsert them. I can always recreate the orientation later. I'll put those staples out of the way in a safe place and now I can remove the interior from the cover. When I'm not working on it I use an acid-free backer board and I put the interior in a mylar. Just an extra level of safety. You never know if a cockatiel is going to fly into your comic book conservation studio and look for nesting material. This just protects your interior pages from such an occasion. Right, now we're ready to start washing our comic book cover. We're going to wash and deacidify it in preparation for the glue removal. So I have a photo development tray I have a sheet of Holitex, which is a non-woven polyester fabric. And then I have the comic book cover and then another sheet of Holitex. I did a video, when to use Holitex, when to use Ramey, when you can use cheaper alternatives. Check it out if you're interested. This is our first wash. It's 500 milliliters of solution in total, with 25% being a saturated calcium hydroxide solution and the balance warm tap water, to which I've added five drops of Triton X100, which is a non-ionic surfactant that I'm using at the critical micelle concentration to ensure the most efficient wash without exposing our comic book cover to any more chemicals than are necessary. I go into much greater detail in an earlier video on how to make the solution and why I've chosen this exact composition based on the peer-reviewed paper conservation literature. Check that video out if you're interested in the details. Once I've added the solution to my page, I will use a squeegee to just push any air bubbles out and make sure all of the paper is exposed to fluid on both sides. This goes much quicker 
when you use warm water with a surfactant in it, because our paper is sized, it is hydrophobic by nature, but the, between the surfactant and the warm water, those hydrophobic tendencies are overcome quite easily. I left it for five minutes, and now it's ready to take out of the bath. I use this method where I peel the Holitech sandwich off the side of my photo development tray. That seems to sort of wring the paper out a little bit, give me a nice rinse effect. And I like to let the paper rest. Again, the paper itself is in a Holitech sandwich, so it is not touching paper towels here, but I like to allow it to rest on paper towels, and I'll put some on top too. This continues the rinse effect by just pulling by capillary action any dirty fluid left. And it does look like it is pretty dirty, although in fairness, part of this is, in fact, some red ink that I could see running off of the comic book. So let's put this in our jar so we can have a look at it. I'll just pull that off. You can see it's a little sudsy from the surfactant. Here's a still image of it. Pretty dark, but again, in fairness, some of that is red ink that I could see coming off the book. Now these early Golden Age books have a lot of ink to give, so I'm not too concerned that it's going to be faded, but it's something we'll keep an eye on. Here is the solution for the rinse. It's the same as the first solution, minus the Triton X100, and the main goal here is to rinse the surfactant out and continue the cleaning and deacidification of the cover. When the page is dried out, this solution will leave what is called an alkaline reserve in the paper, which will protect the paper from future acid-catalyzed hydrolysis, which is the process by which pulp paper literally destroys itself. Once we have the solution in our photo development tray, I'll just retrieve the paper towels from our Holitech sandwich, and I'll place the sandwich in the photo development tray. Because the page has already been wet and the Holitex has a huge surface area and is hydrophilic, we shouldn't need to squeegee it here. And you may have noticed I did flip the page once in the last five minute rinse. I'll also flip it once here in this five minute rinse. And by the magic of video, five minutes has elapsed so we can remove the page from this rinse. You'll note that I did flip it once. I'm going to use this same technique of rolling it. Wow, look at this. A lot of blue ink and probably some additional red ink running here. That's quite a bit of ink. I think we're done with rinsing. I think we got more ink than we did filth out of the book on that one. I'm a little concerned, but as I said before, these Golden Age, especially the pre-war books, have a lot of ink to give, so that's a lot, though. Fingers crossed, boys and girls, that we don't have a massively faded cover here. Let's have a look at this rinse eight. I'm not sure how much it's going to tell us, because when you mix the blue and the red and the orange and the yellow, you get just brown. So it's going to look like we removed a lot of brown filth from the paper. But in fact, I think this is, again, more ink than filth. So let's have a look at this solution as a still. Still pretty dark. Again, I'm not sure how much it's telling us here. But I'm going to stop the rinse at this point. One rinse, five minutes. I'm not going to go any further. The lack of bubbles tells us we got the surfactant out. That's the main goal here. Let's get this page at least partially dried out to arrest this ink bleed and inspect the glue job to see what we need to do to remove the glue from this page. I think we'll save that for the next video though because we are going to keep this page damp and move directly into glue removal and if successful with that, we'll immediately complete the archival tear seal as well and I think that would make this video just a bit longer than it ought to be. So you'll have to check out the next video to see how this process turned out. Thank you for joining me today. 
Are you as worried as I am that we have a massively faded cover for this Golden Age gem? I admit I'm a little concerned. Join me for the next episode where we'll reveal the results of the wash as well as our attempt at glue removal and the archival tear seal. Most of the materials I use today are available from my Amazon Influencer homepage. I'll provide a link in the description for you. If you need any of these materials for your own conservation projects, I appreciate you using those links. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when we put the next episode up. Until next time, take care of one another.